What up, though, Pistons fans? Welcome back to another Pistons post game episode with your boy Deuce. Let's get straight to this game, man. So the Pistons went up against the Golden State Warriors tonight on the road, and they take a loss, 93 to 111. The Pistons rolled out their usual starters tonight, except they went back to Malik Beasley starting at the three spot instead of Tim Hardaway Jr. Bobby Clinton was out again with that right calf contusion, and I'm really starting to wonder now if we're going to see him at all in the preseason with two games remaining. But honestly, at this point, I would rather he just take the time that he needs to get healthy, get fully healthy, and hopefully we'll get a chance to see him within the first few weeks of the regular season. So initial thoughts. Y'all know what it is, right? This game was over by halftime. Um, the Pistons were very sloppy, very, very sloppy and out of sync tonight. And they really just didn't come to play tonight. They had a lot of careless turnovers, which is a big contrast from last game when they really took care of the basketball. But they were just too loosey-goosey with the ball. They weren't crisp with their passing. They just seemed a little bit nonchalant tonight. And the Warriors took advantage of that by getting out in transition and knocking down three after three after three. They were high all night. But to be honest, it's a lot easier when those threes aren't contested because your defense isn't set up. The Pistons, though, by contrast, they were cold all night. All night from three, man. They only made seven out of a possible 29 threes. Seven out of 29. That's frigid. But that was not the case for the Warriors, who were hot all night, making 18 out of a possible 39 threes. The Warriors were without Steph Curry, Draymond Green, and Andrew Wiggins, but it didn't really matter. One thing is for sure, two things for certain. Klay Thompson may be gone, but the Warriors have no plans whatsoever of changing how they play offensively. They're looking to get up a ton of threes this year. And with the additions of guys like De'Anthony Melton and Buddy Hill, who's been top in three-point percentage in the league in the last few seasons, I look for the Warriors to be near the top of the league in three-pointers attempted this season. So let's get to a few individual players tonight. Let's start with Kay Cunningham. Kay was one of the few bright spots for this team tonight, especially in the second half. He really tried to get his offense going in the second half. He could sense the offense was really just stuck in the mud, which it was, and he really took it upon himself to try to get the Pistons going. He finished with 18 points, 7 assists, and 3 rebounds on 9 for 15 shooting in 24 minutes. He was really frustrated tonight too because he wasn't really getting many foul calls. And it seemed to kind of affect him a little bit early. In the second half, he got smacked and you could literally hear him say after he got the bucket, He hit me. You gotta call it if it hits me. <laughs> so he was obviously frustrated all night with the lack of foul calls for the Pistons. But to his credit though, he didn't stop being aggressive. He continued to put pressure on the defense, especially out of that pick and roll with Jalen Duran. And he was able to really get to his spots offensively, especially in that mid-range. And honestly, when Kate is aggressive like that, man, he's really a handful. He's able to really get his offense in a lot of different ways. And I thought tonight he was able to use his size to his advantage by punishing small defenders. Let's get to Jaden Ivey. Jaden Ivey played pretty well too. He finished with 19 points, four assists, one steal and a block on seven for 10 shooting in 26 minutes. J.I. is going to get a ton of his points in transition this season, not only because he's one of the fastest guards in the league, but the Pistons are already showing an ability to turn teams over early and often. They did it early, especially in that first quarter. They're playing with very active hands and they're able to get a lot of deflections. And when that happens, Jaden just takes off every time as soon as the Pistons secure the ball and he's off to the races. But defensively too though, when he's closing out hard on shooters, I'm noticing that he has the foot speed to be able to quickly recover defensively and get off the hip of the offensive guy get back in front, and even alter or block the shot. And we saw that tonight. I think Jaden has a chance to be a really good defensive player as he continues to work at it over the next few seasons. And he also continued to showcase his ability to knock down threes when open. And if he can do that consistently, watch out. Jalen Duran. Jalen Duran was really good tonight as well. He finished with 14 points, nine rebounds, three assists, and one steal on seven for eight shooting in 23 minutes. And what impressed me the most with JD tonight was his defense. He was really impressive defending that paint. And he already appears to be making strides on that end of the floor, which is very, very encouraging. He did have three blocks as well, but what was more important is that he altered a ton more shots at the rim. He's playing with much more discipline. He's staying down a lot more. He's not going for every pump fake. And when he is contesting shots and getting up off the floor, he's just going vertical, right? He understands that he can't block every shot. But if he can make the offensive guy think twice about taking that shot or just alter the shot, it puts the defense in good position to get a stop. And tonight he did that. I've said before that JD has a real shot at being a top 10 center in this league, but it's only going to happen if he continues to make strides on the defensive end. And the early returns look pretty promising. Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris didn't play particularly well tonight. He looked a little bit out of sync offensively, 
And he only finished with six points, four rebounds, and four assists on three of nine shooting in 26 minutes. To his credit though, he did have two steals and three blocks, which was very encouraging. He showed effort on the defensive end, and he really tried to make an impact on that end despite his offensive struggles. So it was good to see that. Tim Hardaway Jr. Man. Tim Hardaway Jr. continues to struggle, man. He went scoreless again. He went 0 for 4 overall, including 0 for 3 from 3 in 14 minutes. It just doesn't seem to matter whether he's starting or coming off the bench. He just looks out of sync. And the offense is just not flowing really well when he's on the court. I just don't think he's going to have a big role on this team this year, but we'll see. Malik Beasley, though, who I would much rather start at the three instead of Tim Hardaway Jr. and started tonight, he wasn't much better, to be honest. He went one for eight overall, including 0 for five from three. It was just a poor shooting night overall for this team. And the defensive intensity and energy, it just wasn't there to keep them in the game despite that poor shooting. Sometimes with young teams, when the offense isn't rolling, it shows up on the defensive side. And if the Pistons really want to grow into a contending team, that can't happen. You're going to have nights like these every year in the regular season. But mature teams, they still find ways to win some of those games. And that's part of the growth process for this team. So hopefully, the best that we brought in can demonstrate that and help instill that into the younger guys. One more thing, last but not least, I want to talk about Coach Bickerstaff. So in the fourth quarter, right? He called back-to-back -back timeouts on consecutive defensive possessions, and he was hot. He was not at all happy with the defense, and he didn't care one bit about the game already being over and the bench being cleared. He didn't care. He's really trying to build a defensive culture, and he was not going to tolerate the pitch and just checking out of the game due to scoreboard watching and it just being the preseason. He wasn't going for it. He's really trying to set a standard. You can see that. That regardless of the situation, when you're on the court, you're going to play hard, or you're not going to be in the court, period. And I love to see that. I'm here for it. We didn't see that sense of urgency at all last season from Monty Williams. So it's really good to see that from Coach Bickerstaff, for sure. But what did you see that I missed? Let me know in the comments and let's talk about it. So that's a wrap for tonight, guys. The Pistons fall tonight to the Golden State Warriors, 93-111. to The Pistons' next game comes on the road Wednesday when J.B. Bickerstaff will face off against his former team, the Cleveland Cavaliers. And that should be an interesting matchup. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more Pistons content all season long. Appreciate y'all hanging with your boy. And until next time, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. I'm on my way up and I'm not gonna stop. We headed straight to the top in the low. I got a taste it. I got no time to waste it. Waste it. It's my time now.